All right, welcome back, my friends. Welcome to this deep dive into the Flying Dragon sequence, which is one of our Yang Yoga sequences that have been created by Paul and Susie Grilly to complement the Yin Yoga practice. Yin and Yang are pairs of opposites that complement each other, and Yin Yoga is more passive, more relaxing. We hold the poses for a long time. Yang Yoga is the more active, strengthening, heart pumping exercise. And so Yang exercise is really characterized by two things, rhythm and repetition. And in this particular sequence, we will be also working on strengthening the upper body, toning the arms, the shoulders, getting the blood moving through the heart. We also are strengthening the core with a good deal of balancing. Also working with getting the head above the heart and the heart above the head in alternating ways. So this is a really invigorating and healing thing for the body to do. And it's one of the things that makes vinyasa yoga so wonderful. What we're gonna be doing that's different than what you might be familiar with from vinyasa yoga is that we're gonna be really working with movements and flow rather than just moving from one static pose to the other. This is very freeing so that you don't really feel like you have to get it right. It's not a really exact alignment. It's more about how it feels and about angling your body in a way that honors your experience. It honors what you're feeling. And in this way, you can really actually get even more out of it as far as your strengthening and invigorating movements. And um, this is, out of the Yang Yoga sequences, one of the two most challenging ones. So if you are new to Yang Yoga, I'd recommend you start with the Golden Seed sequence video that I have or the Warrior Flow sequence. I really love this practice as an alternative to vinyasa, which can sometimes seem kind of rigid where we're supposed to stay within the constraints of our mat and do things in a, in a very certain way. Here there's just this wonderful freedom that I'm really excited to share with you. So let's go ahead and get started sitting on the heels in Seiza. <laughs> So sit on top of your heels or modify this and sit any other way that's comfortable and take a few moments to connect with your breath. Close your eyes, feel your spine nice and tall and feel the tops of your shins on the ground. Your connection to the earth through the tops of your feet, the fronts of your ankles. And breathing more deeply now into the chest, into the ribs, into the back body. And open up your eyes and let your arms come out to either side, taking it into the finger fans. So we'll warm up the upper body before we start to put some weight on it. With the palms facing up, start to curl your fingers in one at a time, starting with the pinky. So pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index, thumb. And then bend the wrists, bend the elbows, and squeeze the back of the heart, and exhale and press the hands forward, palms are open. And now the same thing with the hands, but with the hands starting out here. So palms up, pinkies, ring finger, thumbs last, and then bend the wrists, bend the elbows, squeeze the back of the heart, and press it out, keeping the hands in this pressing position until you're ready to switch. Palms up, we'll do it again. Pinkies first, thumbs last, and then we bend one joint at a time, pulling it in, squeezing the back of the heart, and exhaling, press forward. And now turning the palms up, one finger at a time, pulling, squeezing, and exhaling out. And letting it happen one more time on each direction. So palms up, pinkies in, and thumbs come last, bend the wrists, elbows, getting the juice flowing in the arms, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrists. And one last time here, pulling it in, thumbs last, and squeeze it in and open it back out, pressing out to the sides. Now right into our willows in the wind sequence. So I'll mirror you. So taking your right hand to the floor and your left arm coming up to the side. And just enjoy this side stretch you could gaze up or down and see what feels good. Take a breath or two into the left side of your body.
And now the second part of this, willows in the wind, we dive the left hand under the right. So it's this threading movement, and it's like this twisted child's pose. But I'm gonna let my hips lift up, which you can do, or you could keep them down. And now we let the hips come back to the ground, and we're gonna reach this top arm up, left arm up and back, but it can be a little hard, so this bottom hand can, is allowed to come back as much as it wants to so that you can really open up your chest, open up your shoulder. And now the last step, we sweep this left arm across the front of the body and reach toward the opposite side with the fingertips. At the same time, drop your chin towards your chest so that you can feel the back of the neck, you can feel inside the left shoulder blade. So that's our four steps. Let's take it to the second side. And we're starting out nice and slow and then we'll do it with a little more of a pace. But right now, just kind of luxuriating in this side bend, breathing into the right side of your body. You can turn the gaze up, turn the gaze down for different stretches. And now into that twisted child's pose. So the bottom hand, comes forward a little bit for this, you decide exactly where. Right hand slides under, and you kind of tuck your head, tuck your chin. And now reaching this up and back again, the bottom hand comes back as much as you need to, so you can open your right hand up and back, open your chest. You can maybe look back at that hand. And now take it across the face, reaching right hand toward the opposite side, chin toward the chest. And back up, fly across to the other side. Side bend to begin, and just a breath here, a breath or two in each move. We take it into the twisted child's pose. And now reaching up and back with the top hand. And you could even let this knee open up and back if that feels good. And now we take it across, reaching to the opposite side. And up and over to the second side. And into your twisted child's pose. Good, reach it up and out. And now sweep across the front of the face, chin toward the chest. Switch sides. Four steps on each side here. Good, we take it to the diving child's pose. And a diagonal reach. So this bottom hand moves for every single pose, that hand that's on the ground. You just keep on putting it where it supports your weight best. Over to the opposite side, side bend and switch into diving child's pose, twisted, and reach it up and back to the diagonal, and sweep it across the face. Good, take the arms back to either side, and that's our willows, of the, willows in the wind. Uh, let's come into hands and knees position, and into downward facing dog. And enjoying this first dog pose as you bring some movement into it. You can bend the knees, pump the, pump the heels, whatever movement feels good here as you wake your body up, starting to feel into the hamstrings. Starting to feel the weight in the arms. You can maybe shift your weight forward and back, taking it into a plank pose. And taking three little pulses in the plank pose, one really small, two, and three. Good, drop the knees, come all the way down. Press the hips up and back into child's pose. And coming back up to hands and knees and taking your left foot forward. So continuing to do our mirror image, you're gonna have your left foot, I've got the right, but I'm working with what you're doing, having your left foot forward. So waking dragon pose. We're gonna take it into this 
kind of moving yin yang dragon. It's not entirely yin because we're going to let it move, but it's not entirely yang because we're keeping the back knee down, letting gravity do its thing. And the movement is really just to let gravity find different ways to stretch into this. Uh, left thigh primarily is where we're stretching the left hip flexors, so as. And your hands could be on the inside of the leg. They could be way out to the side. Place your hands in a wide position out to the side. So we're not going for this position where we're close to the foot. We're setting up for what we call the gecko push-ups. My hands are wider than my shoulders to start with. And I'm gonna just bring it into this little push-up here. Not a big deal, my back knee's down. I'm not putting a lot of weight here. But then keep on moving your hands and try out different positions every time you press and lift up. Just so you can navigate your shoulders, your chest, and this really wonderful freedom we have with these gecko push-ups to have this backhand as far back as you need to to get a nice weight support from your arms. Working into the biceps, the triceps, the upper back. So one or two more of these little push-ups. Good, and now let's take it into dragon twist. So this is a baby dragon twist because we're have the back knee on the ground. Right hand is on the floor, left arm comes up and out, and the right hand can still be way out to the side as far as you'd like. So again, we're not trying to get that bottom hand real close to the foot. We're working more with the idea of a tripod with the front foot, the back knee, and the hand that's on the ground. And you could stay here. You could reach back and hold the back foot. If that's not in your range of motion, don't worry about it. One more breath in your twist. And bring it back down. And now, taking the hands onto either side of the front foot, and shift your hips back to come into half split and soften forward over the leg. Feeling into your hamstrings now at the back of your left leg. And that's bringing it forward onto the front foot Tuck the back toes, come through the center, and right over to the other side, starting out in the dragon pose. And again, just letting the hips hang as you explore different angles of the hips, waking dragon. Lots of freedom again to have the hands way out to the side. I sometimes teach this with no mat because I really like to get us outside of the constraint of the two foot width that we're often supposed to stay in in our vinyasa practice. We're really working on not having that constraint here in, in much of this flying dragon practice we're moving into. So you can begin to do your Gecko push-ups, again, your nice wide hands, and playing around with the position, a different position every time to work into different arm muscles, to warm up different arm muscles. And one or two more of these. Good, and now bringing the bottom hand in, not too much, but for this dragon twist, enough so that you feel supported as you lift your right arm up. And you might be straight up, you might 
like to open it way back. See what feels good. Option to hold on to the back foot, taking that dragon holds its tail pose. Another breath or two in this baby dragon twist. And bringing both hands to the ground. And hands on either side of the foot coming into the half split. Softening forward over the leg as you feel the stretch in your hamstrings. And come forward back into the lunge. Lift the back knee up and take a big step forward to the top of your mat. And wide feet, about as wide as the shoulders this time, hang over the legs. And then very slowly roll up to a standing position, one vertebra at a time, preparing for our first round of flying dragon. And this is the baby flying dragon sequence. So the baby is just, we're gonna keep the knee down in all of our lunges instead of lifting it up. And this is going to also be your modified version if you're wanting something lower impact or more beginner friendly. So starting with the baby flying dragon and then we will move into the big flying dragon. So you're here at this right side of your mat or your space and lifting up your left knee to balance here. Take your hands onto your hips and step it back into kind of a balance. So we're not gonna put weight on this back leg. We're just reaching the foot back to a toe touch and you should be able to lift that foot up and place it down with ease because all the weight is on your front right foot. Maybe experimenting with balancing lifting as much as you'd like. The arms can come out like airplane wings to help you. Maybe tilting more. And now stepping back into a lunge like a warrior one, but we're gonna keep the back heel lifted. Hands back to the hips, drop the back knee to the ground. And now into our gecko push-ups. So, Wide hands, three of them, one, two, and three. And after that, we come right into the dragon twist, baby dragon twist, left hand down, right arm up. From the twist, the top hand reaches back and starts to make this circle, dragging down next to the foot and as it drags down it picks the other hand up so we come into baby dragon wings and so opening your elbows back open your heart and now let your wings straighten back behind you fingers can reach back finding the back bend here and sweep your wings out to the sides and out in front as you lean forward reaching through the fingers. And now let the hands find the ground. Tuck your back toes under and step back into dragon swings its tail. Your right leg comes up and back. Lifting the leg up and find the back bend here by lifting your gaze. So your head is like it's trying to touch the foot. And now sweep this leg forward again, and we'll switch to the other side, but we're still in the first side. So this dragon sequence moves from side to side, and you'll start to get the hang of that. Go ahead and drop the back knee. So here's our second dragon twist, and both hands to the ground, back into dragon swings its tail. So this time left leg comes up, 
and into belly of the dragon. So this is our baby belly of the dragon pose. We're letting the knee, left knee to the ground, left hand on the ground and the right arm up. And if you want to go a step further with this, you can take it into a side plank. And bring it back down, taking the left leg back up to dragon swings its tail. And a big step forward now. Lift up, hands on the hips. And take that back leg in so we can come back into the balance. This is the flying dragon pose, or the baby flying dragon pose. And maybe you're balancing with the left leg coming up and bringing the arms out to help balance. Maybe you're just keeping it down. All right, taking it now into the knee in front, hands back to the hips and settle the foot back down. So that's just the first side of baby flying dragon sequence. Here comes the second side. Right knee is up. And now step the leg back, keeping the weight on the front leg and finding your balance as much as you're into at this moment. Okay, now we take it into Hands on the hips, bigger step back like warrior one, and then drop the back knee to the ground. Coming into our baby gecko push-ups, both hands on the inside of the foot, nice and wide, three of them. And now into dragon twist, right hand on the ground, left arm up. Open it back as far as you'd like, and both hands finding the ground as you, um, oh actually, from the twist, we don't find the ground, we come into the circle. And the hands come forward, and open it into your baby dragon wings, elbows back. And now reach the hands back behind you, fingertips reaching back, opening your chest, finding your back bend. And now leaning forward, sweep the wings out to the side, reach them out in front of you. And gracefully plant the hands down to the earth. Now, dragon swings its tail, left leg lifts up. Find your back bend and step it all the way forward again. Walk through to the other side, landing in baby dragon twist, back knee down. Right arm up. Both hands to the ground. And your right leg comes up and back into dragon, swings its tail. And now into our belly of the dragon. So the baby belly of the dragon, knee comes to the ground, come up to the side. So it's like a gate pose, or you move it into a side plank if you'd like. And both hands to the ground, right leg comes up and back to the dragon, swings its tail. And now a big step forward. Standing up in the lunge, hands on the hips, and transitioning to flying dragon pose with the toe touch or the balance. Good, and bringing the knee in to come in front of you, and now place both feet on the ground. So that's the first two sides, or the, the only two sides of the uh, baby flying dragon sequence. So you can keep on with that modified version if you'd like, or we're gonna move on now to the full version. So lift the left knee and taking the arms out to the sides. These are your wings. They're gonna come in towards your chest and then open out to the sides with your left leg reaching back behind you. And now pulse your front leg. Let the knee 
bend and straighten. So there's a lot of mobility and movement in this practice, rhythm and repetition, rather than trying to find static poses. From here, big step back to lunge and right into the gecko push-ups. We land. Three push-ups. One, we're keeping the back knee up this time. Two, and three. And now right into dragon twist. Left hand a little closer, right arm up and back. And sweep the top arm back and down. Let it pick up the other arm and come into dragon wings. So we're keeping the back knee up this time. Elbows out to the sides. And now sweep your, or reach your fingertips back. Find your back bend. And open the arms out to the sides as you lean forward. Reach the fingertips. Inhale. And exhale. Both hands to the earth. Dragon swings its tail. Right leg. Up and back. And a big step forward. Back to your lunge. And now the dragon flies across the ocean, back heel down, sweep the arms up and over, and land in dragon twist right on the other side. Both hands to the earth, dragon swings its tail, left leg. And now the full belly of the dragon pose, left leg threads under, comes through. This is like our rock star pose in yoga, right arm up and back. And now this left leg comes up and back. Dragon swings its tail. Big step forward. And dragon comes into a flying balancing position. This is something to kind of think about. You could shorten your stance first to make it easier to get into it, or you could challenge yourself and see if you can pop up into a balance. Again, you always have that toe touch option here for these balances. You can keep the leg low so that you know the ground is closer. Now we'll bring this knee forward, still balancing on the left leg, as you fold your wings down at your sides and place both feet on the earth. All right, second side, flying dragon, right knee up. Sweep the arms out and take your tail back. So this is your tail, this back leg that's always doing stuff in this sequence. And now we can bring it into the gecko push-ups. So that big lunge and then nice wide hand. Three of them, one and two and three. Bring this bottom hand in a bit, left arm reaches up and back. And now the top hand comes down into the circle, sweeps forward, both hands up and back, dragon wings, open the chest, elbows back, find your back bend, and reach the fingertips back, sweep the arms out, and in front of you as you lean forward, take both hands to the earth, left leg up and back, dragon swings its tail, step it forward, fly across the ocean, and land in, dragon twist on the other side, left hand to the ground, nice wide position of the hand, right arm up. Both hands to the earth, dragon swings its tail, right leg, belly of the dragon, right leg threads under, weight comes onto the right hand, and reach it up and back. Take it back around, right leg up and back. And step it forward, preparing for your flying dragon balance. So shorten the stance if you need to, and come on up. Toe touch if you need it. Any movement that feels good here, arms can explore the space around you. Bottom leg that's standing can bend and pulse, and even the lifted leg can bend and pulse. Now we'll bring it into our standing position, still balancing, left knee forward, as you fold your wings at your sides. All right, so that's our first full round. Let's do it some more 
times. Left knee up. Finding your balancing position. Flying dragon. Now this time around, let's think a little bit more about what the feet are doing. We take it down into the lunge and the gecko push-ups. So the toes can turn out to the side as much as you'd like here. We are not in any way trying to impose feet forward and back. We'll take it into three, two, and one, and then right into your twist. Again, the toes can be pointed out as much as you'd like or not. And now let's bring it into dragon wings, sweep the arm down, and bring it forward. Now, to support yourself as you get your weight off of the hands and onto the feet, again, you can turn your front foot out to the side or forward as much as you want to. Elbows out to the side. Open your chest, find your back bend. Reach the fingertips back. Lean forward, sweep the arms around, reach the fingers forward and place both hands on the earth. Dragon swings its tail, right leg up and back. Big step forward again, and into flying across to the other side. Land in dragon twist. Front foot can angle whichever way serves you best. Both hands find the ground. Dragon swings its tail. And now belly of the dragon. Slide it under. And reaching the right arm up and back. So you might like staying on the side of the foot here. You might like to place both feet flat. That's your call, your body, your call. Bring it back up, left leg into the air. And now your big step forward and into your balance as gracefully as you can. Step and lift. And now as gracefully as you can, pulling this knee to the front and some kind of gesture. There's nothing very exact about what the arms do here, but gesturing to fold your wings at your sides. All right. Second side, right knee up and fly. Movement if it feels good. And drop it down to the gecko. One, two, and three. And into your twist. Sweep the arm back and down and into dragon wings. So the back knee could be bent, which can be more powerful sometimes, or you could keep it straight. It's up to you. Open your chest, find your back bend, elbows back, and then reach the fingertips back behind you. And sweep the arms around and all the way in front. Lean forward. Both hands to the earth. Dragon swings its tail. Big step forward. Fly across the ocean and over to the opposite side. Dragon twist. Both hands to the earth, right leg up and back. Swing the tail, thread it under, belly of the dragon. And take it back around, right leg up and back. And stepping forward, gracefully coming into flying dragon balance. Or not gracefully. <laughs> and now take the knee forward and fold your wings at your sides. All right, finding the earth, both feet, take a few breaths before we come into another round. Left knee up, open the wings out to the sides and balance. And dropping it down into gecko push-ups. You could even just do one of these. I like to do three. Some people like to do more. Take it in, drag and twist. Right arm up. And sweep the arm down, coming into dragon wings. 
front foot can point out or wherever. Elbows back, open the chest, reach the fingers back, lean forward, sweep the arms around, bring them in front of you, both hands to the earth, take the right leg up and back, and step it forward, fly across the ocean, land in dragon twist on the second side, and take it down, both hands to the earth, dragon swings its tail, left leg up, belly of the dragon, left leg under, Lift your hips, reach the arm, take it back around. Dragon swings its tail and step forward. Flying dragon, find your balance. And take the knee in, release your arms down to your sides. Whew. Okay. Next side, right knee up, open out your wings, reach your tail back and fly. You can imagine you're flying above your city or your mountains and protecting the earth, protecting the people, all the beings with your big massive heart. And now into gecko push-ups, landing, making your landing, one, two, and three and into dragon twist. Take the upper arm back and into dragon wings. Open up the chest. And reach the fingertips back. Sweep the arms out. And in front of you as you lean forward, take both hands to the earth and left leg up and back. Dragon swings its tail. Step the leg all the way forward. Fly across the ocean. Land on the second side. Dragon twist. And take the arm down. And your right arm comes, right leg comes all the way up. Dragon swings its tail and into belly of the dragon. And both hands to the earth. Dragon swings its tail. Big step forward. And coming into flying dragon pose. And bringing the knee forward. Fold your arms. Fold your wings at your sides. All right, so that's our rounds of Flying Dragon. If you would like more repetition, the beauty of video is that you can rewind to the last um, round or two and do some more repetitions before you finish. So let's take it to the ground now. Hands on the hips, feet, shoulder width, and hands to the earth. Lower the hips into a squat. And now coming onto your back, hug both knees in. And twisting both knees to the right, left arm to the left side. And taking it for two minutes here. And bring the knees back up to the center. Reposition yourself to twist on the second side.
and bring the legs back up to the center. Roll all the way over to the side and we'll come up for a seated forward bend, coming into caterpillar pose, both legs in front of you, come forward over the legs. And if you prefer to do a snail pose, and if that's in your practice, you can roll onto your back and send the legs up and over the head. Hands could stay at the back or they could reach above the head. So either of these poses, forward bending after that flying dragon sequence, which is a lot of back bending kinds of movements. Now we can just kind of curl into ourselves, soften in. And now slowly releasing and come all the way down onto your back for final relaxation, Shavasana. Make yourself comfortable on your back with anything you need, extra clothes, perhaps a bolster under your knees or cover yourself with a blanket or an eye pillow. Let your arms and legs spread out, sprawl out as much as you'd like. And this is your time to absorb, to soak in all of this juicy energy that's been awakened. Feeling the pulse of the blood. Feeling the breath. The flying dragon sequence is a fiery sequence and we can now feel like the body is cooling down. Cooling down from all that heat. And you can feel into your arms, your shoulders, your upper body. After all the work that your upper body did in that sequence. Notice maybe a sense of aliveness in the arms and the shoulders, the upper spine. And with all the one-legged back bending, you might have some sensations in the front of the hips, hip flexors, the sacrum, the lower back. And with all of the balancing and core work in that sequence, notice any sensations buzzing or swirling around your core.
This brings us to the close of this practice. You can continue resting as long as you'd like. And I'll leave you now, and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. If you're interested in going deeper with me, you might want to check out my membership site. I have a community of yogis who follow a daily calendar of yoga videos in yin yoga, yang flow, and meditation. I also have special programs and I have yin yoga teacher trainings and you can find out more about this at devidailyyoga.com. And if you take a look at the first pinned comment down below, you'll see my latest special offer. And if you liked this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other yoga videos. And leave me a comment. Let me know how this practice went for you. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to know if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Namaste.